But I'm going to go ahead and transition to introduce our next our guest speaker. And I have to applaud uh, uh, Rita. She's been she has the patience of a saint because this is the third time I've introduced her, and she's probably really getting tired of me. And I might sound like a broken record. So what I actually did is I did a little more homework so I can give her a real proper introduction this last time around. Now, of course, uh, Rita is a microbiologist, and she's informed a really, I think, a transformational uh, effort going forward. NOAA has, has developed an omics strategy to advance applications like environmental DNA across the entire agency. And this really was built upon the decades of important work that, that Rita has conducted. But let me tell you a little more about her. She uh, earned tenureship in Georgetown University in 1966, a year before I was born. Now, I'm not trying to date you, Rita. I'm just trying to applaud the extensive extensive contributions you made to science in our nation and in the world. And currently, I'll acknowledge that you're a distinguished professor at University of Maryland College Park. Um, but a couple other accolades, which I just, <laughs> I, I can't resist pointing out. Uh, the first female science director or director of the National Science Foundation and currently a CEO of a bioinformatics company. She is the past president of the American Society for Microbiology and past president of the American Association of the Advancement of Science and past president of the American Institute for Biological Sciences. Her awards list is just extensive and include, includes such incredible commendations as the National Medal of Science, the National Women's Hall of Fame, and several other international awards, which are incredibly prestigious. And there's more, 61 honorary degrees, 800 publications, 19 books. Uh, it's, I, I don't know where to end here, Rita, and I, I really, I'm, I'm just so enthused to be able to have the honor of introducing you right now. Uh, I saw you last year when you were inducted into the Women's Aquatic uh, Network Hall of Fame. And um, I, I want to make a special mention to your most recent book. You know, a lot of people have sort of been on, uh, kind of on their heels during the pandemic, and you have pressed on with your research, with your leadership of Gomri, and you've even published, a, I think, one of your most important books to date, and it was called, in August, you published it, A Lab of One's Own, One Women's Journey Through Sexism and Science. And I, I've not I've ordered it, I've not read it yet, but I've read the reviews and it's a, it's a profound piece because you know you, what you had to endure and pioneer through has inspired so many women that followed you. And, and women today in my agency conducting such leading uh, science and technology efforts, thank you for setting the stage, paving the foundation for them to go on and do such great work. And it's inspired me personally to really support women empowerment in NOAA and in science in general in the United States and, and not tolerate any kind of harassment or assault that you've seen in the past. So thank you for your inspiration, Lita, Rita, pardon me. And I'll just ask, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a warm virtual welcome to our Gomri Chair, Dr. Rita Caldwell. Well, thank you, Admiral Gallaudet. You are more than generous. And I'm so pleased that, um, that you carry the message of, um, how should I say, when you want to fight a war, you don't go with half an arm army. You want, when you want to lead in science and uh, 21st century, you don't want half the brains, you want all the brains. So thank you for very much for the kind comments, but especially in pointing out the importance of um, equality and um, opportunity for women in science as well. So I, I'm, I'm a little bit overcome because that was so generous. <laughs> Let me first thank Dr. Robert Twilley, uh, another sentimental callback to the, to, the, to the past when I was a Sea Grant director. And uh, Dr. Twilley is now director of the Louisiana Sea Grant program. And thank you for hosting this event. And Emily uh, Mong Douglas, thank you for organizing all this um, program. It's terrific. Gomery's had really a a wonderful partnership with all of the Gulf of Mexico Sea Ground programs. But I have to confess it's strongest with the LSU because I mean, who can turn down New Orleans for a meeting place? Um, so we, we turned constantly to um, Louisiana and, um, and, and I'd especially like to um, again, thank Admiral Gallaudet for joining us this afternoon and for taking time to come and recognize the terrific and important role that Sea Grant plays in communicating the science of NOAA 
to both the public and the lawmakers. I will reminisce a little bit in that I can remember when I was Sea Grant Director, uh, it was how I learned really to work the Hill because Sea Grant was going to be axed out. It was during the Reagan administration. And um, I learned with, along with all the other Sea Grant directors how to go up on the Hill. And I must say that Sea Grant never got axed out. It just got bigger and stronger, which I think is a testimony to all the people who have worked in the many programs, and especially those who participated in the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative. I thank them all for their leadership in outreach and communication. So now let me give a, um, some brief context and a bit of history about the Gulf of Mexico Research Program. But, but first, first before I say anything, um, please let us recognize and be cognizant of those who perished in the terrible disaster. These were men who lost their lives and we must remember them. Sorry about that. We must remember them and uh, um, always remember that their sacrifice uh, did lead to some extraordinary um, uh, work that we were able to do. I would like also now to recap a little bit of the um, uh, Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative background. About a month into the spill, uh, BP made a commitment of $500 million to fund research over a 10 year period. And it was to be focused on the Deepwater Horizon oil spill and related events. Uh, really, it's kind of interesting to think that this was a phone call that um, Ellen Williams, who was the chief scientist of BP, uh, made to me. I knew Ellen because she had been a physicist in the Department of Physics at the University of Maryland and uh, had gone on to become chief scientist for BP, hardly there when the Deep Horizon spill occurred. But she called me and asked me to lead a board of prominent scientists and university administrators to guide the, um, um, the gone reinvestment into the best available science uh, and uh, research. But fortunately, the direction from BP was a clear mission um, for funding the best science and across five theme areas. The board began its activities in the late 2010. Uh, it took us some months because of the various um, um, machinations, I guess you might say, going on about um, the um, spill and, and uh, the work that needed to be done. Uh, we started our work, we formed various committees to guide the decision making. These were committees that really were important, ethics, outreach, uh, proposal solicitation, um, and proposal review, as well as data management, fiscal management, etc. We had to build a management team from scratch. We had to um, um, request and uh, review proposals, cover contract development, implement the work that needed to be done and carry out fiscal oversight under GOMA and the uh, Consortium for Ocean Leadership. We hired a chief science officer. You'll hear from him later. Um, Chuck Wilson is one of the finest people I've ever had a great opportunity to work with. In fact, I call him one of my heroes. Now, to start our work, BP outlined five specific areas. Um, the research board uh, was to encourage the best research in the physical, chemical, environmental, technological developments and public health. These areas have been the focus of our investment in science. The research board ran <clears throat> six open competitions. We called out uh, requests for proposals. We solicited the proposals and in all of the areas. We did have great difficulty um, getting proposals in the public health area, because as it turns out, we were really helping launch a new discipline, and that is environmental public health. Now the um, funding went to institutions across the Gulf, including and especially Louisiana. And now we're at the end of the program. It's been 10 years, it's been the fastest 
speediest 10 years I've ever spent in my life, which means I've had a really, really good time with this program. It's been great. Uh, over the past 10 years and um, roughly um, six very competitive RFPs, the Research Board awarded $420 million to scientists around the world <clears throat> with a focus on the Gulf of Mexico. And I really emphasize the fact that we spent as the total bulk of the money of the $500 million, we spent on research, which is really what we should have done and what we were glad to do. Those investments led to a huge increase in publications. As you can see here, um, the publications now are beyond 1600. And the individual science presentations to various groups around the country, around the world, are about um, almost 6,000. But the best, the best of all, is that we did fund 1,200 graduate students, but also high school students. And um, this, I think, is the tremendous legacy of the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative. I don't really have time to go into all of the productivity, but it's been incredible. Um, now, this slide represents the huge amount of information, but um, the good news is that all of that information is being, I won't say boiled down, but, but it's being synthesized, it's being integrated, brought together uh, and summarized uh, in these particular core areas of circulation observations, fate and weather, ecological systems, etc. cetera. Um, we're just now completing the work across these nine synthesis core areas. We've already had more than 30 publications and, and reports that have come out of the synthesis activities already. And there'll be a whole lot more to follow. And again, Sea Grant will bring the summaries. Uh, the summaries of those syntheses will be available through the Sea Grant uh, outreach. The uh, resultant synthesis products can be accessed as well from, from our website, which will continue uh, for a few years beyond um, the end of the 10-year uh, period in December. Our synthesis goal is to document, and I would say exploit, the scientific achievements and the advances that we've made uh, so that the, there'll be new understanding improved practices based on the 10 years of um, GOMRI research. Now I'd like to highlight another very important resource. We established an extremely important data archival system, the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative Information and Data Cooperative, Grid C. In support of transparency and making sure that science and education is right in front of the community at large. BP laid out a, the progressive forward-looking expectation that all data collected with Gomery funding should be publicly available. So in response, Gomery, we spent um, significant resources, millions of dollars to make that happen. Participation wasn't optional. Uh, compliance, therefore, has been extremely good. Uh, the data had to be entered, and they are being preserved. And what's good about the data database is that it's not just a bunch of data that you could sort of read through, but it's data that's in a form that's actionable, usable, and available. And it will be available with our support through 2030 and hopefully beyond the, into the future as um, perhaps the National Academy Gulf of Mexico Initiative um, will, in, will use the database and uh, incorporate the new data they gather into the grid C. <clears throat> now, Gomery has spent a lot of funding, significant funding, conducting a number of different activities that target public outreach. It was really important to us that the public needed to know what we were doing, even as we were doing it, because they were asking questions that needed to be answered. And so we targeted 
a variety of activities for public outreach. And all of these are now part of the legacy that goes forward. And, and I hope that you that who are listening will use them in the future. Now, for example, the research consortium have developed um, extensive websites and that includes a, a variety of uh, useful educational products. Um, and we're, we're working on how to make sure that these continue well into the future. We produce three documentaries, Journey to Planet Earth, and a number of uh, podcasts have come out of the filming that was done for those documentaries. Um, uh, they're on YouTube uh, and they'll continue post gomery that is beyond December. We organized and were active in um, guiding the uh, Gulf of Mexico oil spill and ecosystems um, sciences conferences, the, the Go Moses, uh, which uh, Laura Bowie will tell you about next. We engaged the Smithsonian Museum's uh, Natural History Ocean Portal to highlight uh, the relevant scientific findings, the publications and the information from those publications. And they'll be preserved on their website, which is terrific. Now, I must say that we're proudest and most pleased with the outreach activities that the Sea Grant program has had in making information available to communities, resource managers, and local governments. Sea Grant has produced a tremendous number and a great variety of brochures. These are in response to public questions. And um, Sea Grant has also sponsored webinars and seminars to educate the community, to educate about marine oil spills. And, and um, within the Sea Grant net network, these will continue well into the future. As I mentioned, their final activities will be to convey our synthesis activities, and it'll be through these same outreach uh, tools. And I would like to bring your, to your attention the um, wonderful three-part documentary series, The <clears throat> Dispatches from the Gulf. These are narrated by Matt Damon, um, who volunteered, and uh, we were delighted for him to uh, do the narration. And all three documentaries are available for streaming on YouTube. So I, I, I thank you really very much for your attention. Um, I'd like to point out the, the members of the Gomery Research Board, as you'll see there from all of the Gulf institutions and from international institutions as well, and from leading oceanographic institutions in the US. Um, I'd really like to personally acknowledge and thank this team of um, scientists and university administrators. It's been incredible to work with them and to work not only with this great team, but also five thousand people who have participated in Gomery. I'd like to um, thank uh, Debbie Benoit and um, Rick Shaw for their tremendous contributions to the Gomery program. Um, it's really been amazing to um, work with what I call the Gomery family. Uh, we've worked together, it's been fun, we've had good times, and we've worked really hard. And uh, to all of them, thank you.